Hey guys, this is Burial Blade, and today I'm going to be publishing my first uh, public guide video. So, right now, most of my guide videos are private and are exclusive to people in my guild, and they can only be accessed through that Discord server. If you guys like this content and you're interested in more like it, consider reaching out to me and seeing if you want to join the guild. If not, it's totally fine. We're going to just get into a simple ranking of the uh, best and worst sylphs. So I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best. Number six is the worst, number one is the best. With all that being said, we can get right into it. But this is my personal opinion, and you all are free to disagree. But uh, if you want to let me know something I forgot, let me know in the comments down below. Let's get into it. Coming in at number six, in dead last place, we have Medusa. The Wind-type Sylphs have always been bad. Medusa is definitely better than her previous generation counterpart, Pan, by a long shot, but it's not enough to bring her up to the top. It's not even enough to bring her up one. Unfortunately, I have to put Medusa down low, just because if we weigh everything she can do, pretty much there's another Sylph who can do it better. But, her pros, she does have some decent AoE attacks, she can lower res reduction, and, most importantly, she can steal awakening points and buff her teammates' attack substantially. She's not useless, but, out of all the Sylphs, she has the lowest damage, comparatively low survivability and defense, and only some limited utility. With that in mind, I can't put her any higher. Medusa goes at number 6. At number 5, we've got Triton, or Iris, the Water Healing Sylph. So Triton is a really, really good Sylph in the right hands. I'm going to say that outright. The healing capability and support capability you can get with this Sylph is unmatched. But taking all aspects of the game into account, there's just not a whole lot of situations where you can really stall a fight in this game. You kinda can in PvP but the damage is just going to keep ramping up, so it's very hard. In PvE, not only is the damage going to ramp up a little bit, but the enemies usually put on a 1000% attack bonus and put an end you right then and there. With that in mind, healing builds become very, very obsolete, especially uh, in solo play. If you're using it as a support, though, it's absolutely great. The pros of this Sylph is the unmatched healing that it can, it can put out. The output is insane, it has some AoE, a little bit of damage, and a lot of support to help all of your teammates. The cons though, its damage is just terrible. Its damage is worse than Pan's, somehow, and it basically has nothing else other than its Delphic and one single target high damage move. Really. I can't put it any higher than 5, but there are some strategies that can make this self worthwhile. Coming in at number 4, it really hurts me to say this, but we have Athena, or the Light Sylph. Now, I really wanted this Sylph to be up higher. I really did. I love the design, I love the look of all the skills, I love the concept of an AoE destroying Sylph, but that's where it ends. Athena just can't seem to do anything all that much better than its harder-hitting counterparts. It's like an AoE specialist that isn't even the best at AoE. Granted, there is a quantity over quality aspect to this Sylph. If you're taking this into something like Tower of Kings or Guild Battle, the pros of having four different AoEs on a single Sylph, possibly five if you configure the six skill setup like that, is really just devastating. It can be great, but the lack of damage and the lack of utility just keeps this Sylph way further down than I think it should be. The passives are awesome, being able to buff up the damage, but it just still isn't enough. Really, Athena is a great Sylph, and in the right circumstances, can be truly a devastating Sylph. But in most circumstances, you're going to find that our next three are going to do everything better. Coming in at our number three spot, we've got Cerberus or the Fire Type Sylphs. These are a hidden gem and a whole lot of people just don't go for them. 
Reason being, though, is usually that uh, this is a damage type sylph. And if you want damage, our number one pick is the pick for you. But let's get into the pros. So the pros of Cerberus, it has extremely high damage, the second best of all the sylphs, and it hits AoE on most of its hits. Unfortunately, the Delphic and the other skills have a chance to hit one or two enemies, or two or three enemies, so it's not as reliable as you'd want from an AoE sylph, but the damage is definitely there. Uh, as well, with its kit, is defense reduction and increasing the damage an opponent takes. Once again, really, really powerful, except these are both single target abilities on a sylph that leans just a little bit more into AoE. Its passives, however, are just terrible. They are really holding this sylph back from being everything it could be. With all that in mind, can't really put this sylph any higher than number three, but it is still really good. Number two, we have Gaia, or our dark sylphs. This sylph is different. It does not excel in damage. Amazon Queen and Cerberus are going to be dealing even more damage than Gaia. Gaia comes in with utility as the thing that makes it so strong. On its pros, it's got a decently heavy hitting AoE, Delphic, which is already a good start. It has a few AoEs in its kit as well, including Death's Harvest, which is going to be buffing some damage that you do to the opponent. It has self heals that also inflict damage with Devour Soul, a very high damaging, the highest damaging even uh, basic attack with a one second cooldown, the ability to lower the amount that your opponent heals, uh, the ability to reduce their awakening points. I mean, it, it really just goes on. This is a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type of sylph, but it just has so many things it can do that it really bumps it up, in my opinion. This is a sylph that you can bring into PvE, and you will do well. You're not going to do the best you can, but it's also a sylph you can bring into group PvP. It's a sylph you can bring anywhere and do very well. Sure, there are sylphs that can perform better in its specific aspects, uh, like damage or AoE, but when it comes to being a perfect all-rounder, Gaia takes it. Unfortunately for the cons, it's just got slightly below the damage that you'd want to get out of it, and its passives that build its damage rely on you managing your health well, which is a tough thing to do sometimes. And coming in at our number one spot as a surprise to absolutely no one, we have Hercules and the Electro Sylphs. Where do we begin with these? Let's start with the cons since there are so few, okay? Hercules cannot hit area of effect very well. It still has one skill that can kind of do it, but other than that, no. Hercules can't do AoE. Okay, we're done with the cons. Now let's get on to the pros. Its damage is the highest of all the sylphs, and its skills are extremely quick to cast. It's very noticeable how fast these skills will come out. Its passives are perhaps the most brokenly overpowered thing I've ever read in this video game, with its most powerful one being able to increase your attack every time you get hit. Up to 50%. 50%. I shouldn't even need to explain why that's busted. Its other skills, such as Jupiter's Wrath, are going to be not letting the opponent use skills. Uh, it's also going to be doing high damage with a low cooldown and prioritizing players. It's got defense reduction for everybody. It's got slows. There's not really much that Hercules doesn't have, and he combines that all with a kit that just slams in damage. This is the perfect sylph to go alongside an archer if you want a damage-heavy crit build, but frankly, you could put this on every, anything, even a mage, and still kick some ass. So, that's our sylph ranking. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you uh, like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. That would mean a lot to me. And I'll see you all next time.